Hello, everyone. I'm Laura Sparks, president of the Cooper Union, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2022 Cooper Union Alumni Association Founders Day Awards. Thank you for joining us in celebration tonight as we honor an outstanding group of Cooper alumni for their achievements in architecture, art, engineering, and public service. Patty, Donald, Jennifer, Carrie Ann, and Kay, you have each fulfilled your dreams and ambitions in incredible ways, all the while bringing positive awareness to the Cooper Union. Your fellow alumni have rightfully named you to the prestigious Cooper Union Hall of Fame, and it is my distinct honor to open this special occasion. We are pleased once again to be presenting this award ceremony as part of our Cooper Together Week. And I'd like to convey a special thanks to those of you who are joining in this celebration, whether in person or virtually, to honor the incredible ties among the Cooper community, wherever you may be. Six years ago, we started the Cooper Together tradition so that alumni anywhere in the world could connect with one another as a way of celebrating the history and future of this extraordinary school. To make that happen, we organized in-person events, but also turned to social media to bring us together across continents and time zones. Little did we know back in 2017 that building those kinds of virtual connections would become such an important part of keeping our Cooper community together, especially in recent years. Remarkably, we've become a stronger institution for it, crafting new ways of working, collaborating with one another and maintaining our rigorous educational experience. As alumni, you know how quintessential hands-on learning is for Cooper students. It is because of your ongoing support that we are confidently navigating the ups and downs of the pandemic while staying on course in our 10-year strategic plan to return to full tuition scholarships for all undergraduate students and continually enriching our students' education in exciting new ways. Alumni like you have been instrumental in driving our positive momentum, and I want to share my heartfelt gratitude for your generosity, for the example you set for our students, and for your commitment to moving Cooper forward. I also want to thank the CUAA for presenting tonight's program and to express my sincere congratulations to our honorees. The hours and energy you all devote to making this special event possible, no matter the format, are so appreciated. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce Laura Spinner, the CUAA's Awards Committee Chair. Laura is a graduate of the School of Art. She has served on the CUAA Council for the past six years, including on the Nominating Committee and Events Committee, in addition to her service as Chair of the Awards Committee and organizer of this event. Thank you, Laura. Congratulations, honorees, and thank you all once again for your ongoing support of the Cooper Union. Thank you, Laura Sparks. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you to the 2022 Founders Day Award Ceremony. The Founders Day Professional Awards are named for four individuals whose lifetime achievements demonstrate more than simply excellence in their field. They share Peter Cooper's vision of humanitarian values and the desire to elevate the spirit. This vision has influenced generations of students to continue on a path of excellence it is sparked by curiosity and home with commitment and dedication. The Gunna Dunn Award is given for achievement in engineering, industry, science, or finance. Gunna Dunn believe that engineering is a social art and for engineers to be wholly effective, they must be conscious of all the social values of their time. This year's Gunna Dunn Award is given to Donald Rapp. The Augustus St. Gaudens Award was established on a professional achievement in art. St. Gaudin started his studies at Cooper Union at age 13 and went on to become one of the preeminent sculptors of his era. His work can be seen throughout New York City and the United States. This year's Augusta St. Gaudin's Award is given to Patty Jenkins. The John Q. Haydick Award is given for the contribution to the theory, teaching, and our practice of architecture. His passion for architecture and teaching inspired generations of students and transformed architectural education. As a result, many great designs of the past 50 years bear his influence. This year's John Q. Haydick Award is given to Jennifer Lay. 
The Peter Cooper Public Service Award was established in 2014 and is given for exemplary service to society and the furtherance of humanitarian ideals that Peter Cooper embraced. By providing a free education, our founder made higher learning accessible to the working classes. He believed that knowledge is a spark to growth, prosperity, and the betterment of society. This year's Peter Cooper Public Service Award is given to Carrie Ann Kelly. In addition to the professional awards, the Alumni Association honors a truly dedicated individual, Kay Nordstrom, with the Alumna of the Year Award. We honor her for many years of support, commitment, and the contributions that she has made to the Alumni Association and to the Cooper Union. On behalf of the CUAA, Kay, I want to thank you for all you have done. Peter Cooper's ideals resonate in the achievements of each person being honored here tonight and are evident in their extraordinary accomplishments. Congratulations. I, Dr. Melissa Rapp, am proud to introduce my father, Dr. Donald Rapp, the recipient of the 2022 Gano Dunn Award. Growing up, I knew my father was brilliant and accomplished. He graduated from Cooper Union in chemical engineering, earned his master's at Princeton, and studied for his PhD at Caltech and Berkeley. He was a senior research scientist and division chief technologist for the mechanical systems engineering and research division at JPL for 23 years. He is also the author of multiple scientific books and the proposal manager for two major winning space exploration proposals, Genesis and Deep Impact. My father has been working on a project called MOXIE the last few years. The full realization of how amazing my father's accomplishments are occurred when I watched the Perseverance rover land on Mars February 18th, 2021. As I watched the rover land, the NASA representative described MOXIE, an instrument on perseverance that converts Martian carbon dioxide into oxygen. I had a strong sense of wow. My father has been an essential part of the MOXIE team from inception to now. Interestingly, MOXIE is also a word that I would use to describe my father. He has not let life's barriers keep him from achieving. He has not let retiring or turning 88 interfere with his productivity. When my mother was diagnosed with stage four melanoma, he was steadfast and committed, which helped her live for an additional five years. He suffered a life-threatening illness a few years ago and demonstrated great courage and fortitude. Today, you would never know how ill he was. My father always got a kick out of calling me and saying, this is Dr. Rapp calling for Dr. Rapp. So without further ado, this is Dr. Melissa Rapp introducing Dr. Donald Rapp. When I graduated from Brooklyn Technical High School in 1951 and entered Cooper Union as a freshman, I rubbed elbows with the cream of the New York high school graduates who could not afford to go to an out-of-town college and pay tuition. My family was poor, but I found out decades later that some of my classmates lived in families that were just scraping by. So most of us were poor, but we were all determined to learn and uh, we were all smart. And I loved math and physical chemistry. I soaked them up like a sponge. There were about 25 of us in chemical engineering. We were an elite group, mostly nerds. I joined the debating team. I forget why. In my first debate, I was paired with a young lady from the art school, and we drove up to West Point to debate the cadets. She was wearing blue eyeshadow. I don't know why that's important, but it mattered somehow. Anyway, we got married two years later. We stayed together for 53 years until she died of cancer in 2009. After that, I followed the usual, graduate school, research, professorship, whatever. 
One of my achievements was to exploit the so-called semi-classical approach to analyzing transitions in molecules and atoms induced by molecular collisions. This involved treating the trajectories of the particles using ordinary classical mechanics and using quantum mechanics to evaluate the transitions that took place between the quantum states. This simplified the problem enormously, allowing many results to be obtained with far less effort than the full quantum approach. When I look back on 62 years since I received my PhD, I can see a pattern. A great deal of my original work was constructed to simplify complex problems and make them tractable. I always thought I wasn't smart enough to solve the full complex problem, so I had to simplify the problems down to my level, but this made them eminently useful. This simplification was what made the problems tractable. The papers I published in the 1960s are still being cited in research articles today. One of my papers was cited 1900 times. And if you don't have a calibration on what that means, I can assure you it's a lot. When 1900 other papers have cited my paper. Well, anyway, I used my 30 years at Jet Propulsion Laboratory to build up my expertise on space systems and space missions. And after I retired in 2002, I wrote a book on human missions to Mars, now in its second edition. I also used my retirement time to investigate phenomena that had interested me for years and years, but I never had time to study them. So in my retirement, I voraciously studied climate change, ice ages, and even financial bubbles. And I published books on all these topics. All told, I published seven books after retirement. Well, to wind this up recently, about a dozen of us surviving 1955 Cooper graduates in chemical engineering met in a Zoom meeting. And I was amazed and delighted to learn what they had all achieved in their lives and how accomplished they were. Almost any one of them could have received this award instead of me. And, and they've, they're, they're an amazing group. We were. The, the 1955 chem engineering graduates were a wonderful group. I was happy to be one of them. So in closing, I take this award, not so much for myself, but for the class of 1955, chemical engineering. Thank you. My name is Colin Samuel from the class of 1996, and I agreed to say a few nice words about my friend, Carrie Ann Kelly. How Carrie and I met is a testament to Cooper's freshman orientation. She sat next to me on the bus on that fateful day in 1992, and in doing so, became my oldest college friend. We didn't take very many classes together, she in civil, me in chemical, although there was at one time in sophomore physics class when I kept falling asleep and she was next to me, punching me in the arm and, and head really, really hard to wake me up. Thank you. In the 30 years since, I've grown not only to call her a faithful friend, but I've also become a fan of hers. I remember when she took up triathlons and it was truly inspiring to watch her conquer the Lake Placid Ironman back in 04. She was a major influence in my taking up running for that brief period in time in my life. And she was there when I completed my first half marathon in 2008. She's amazing at everything she tries and is fearless in the face of life's challenges. In addition to that fearlessness, she's faithful, fascinating, funny, and frank the best set of qualities in a friend for me. A few short months after that marathon, she was gone, off to a new challenge doing extraordinary work with NGOs, primarily Doctors Without Borders, as head of mission and as a project coordinator all over the world, from Tbilisi to Tripoli, from Northern Nigeria to Southern Sudan, and everywhere else in between. What she's accomplished during humanitarian outreach over the past 12 years has been staggering. 
helping treat reformed prisoners with TB and HIV, providing food and shelter for people fleeing war-torn countries and insurgencies, supplying medical treatment for women and children fighting a plethora of maladies from malaria to cholera to COVID. Her work has undoubtedly and literally saved millions of people. How cool is that? In closing, I am honored and humbled to introduce my good friend, Carrie Ann Kelly to the Cooper Union Alumni Hall of Fame. Thank you. Hello from Juba, South Sudan. Thank you so much for this award. I really appreciate it. It's an honor. Almost 30 years ago, I entered into Cooper Union in the engineering school. And during those very fast four years, the things I think I took away the most with me is a world-class education that has opened more doors than I could imagine, I'm sure. And a supportive community where I'm lucky to count my closest friends are still from my class in, of Cooper Union, um, which is a blessing. So I've spent the past 13 years, a little more, working with the different NGOs, mainly with um, Doctors Without Borders, which goes by its French acronym, MSF, and work mainly in Sub-Saharan Africa. So Sudan, Uganda, Ethiopia, Kenya, Chad, Libya, Nigeria, Malawi, and over five years in South Sudan, which now has somehow become like a home. I've, in this time, had a really varied uh, experience in humanitarian world. I spent two years in Malawi, which was with HIV and TB programming and a very safe and stable context. But over 10 years of my time has been spent in conflict and post-conflict uh, context. And this is really uh, the part that I find the most rewarding to work with people who have been a part of massive displacements due to conflict. You get this opportunity to meet with communities who lose loved ones. They uh, walk for days for safety, typically carrying a child, then carrying any other possessions that they might be able to still carry for days. You lose everything. But what you don't lose is what makes us all the same. You don't want your children to be sick. You don't want your children to go to bed hungry. You don't want your sister or your wife to die of childbirth. That these are these universal things that nobody wants. So while you're in these interventions, you end up seeing some of the worst things as well. To work for months to build a new hospital in Ron, Nigeria, and then to have it only open for a few weeks before the displacement camp is attacked and the hospital is looted, the hospital is destroyed, and you're back to 50,000 people having no access to care because of just a night of violence. These are some of the challenges that go along with what the work is like. So mainly my work has been on the non-medical side. Obviously, I'm not medical. I'm an engineer, but it's to try to make things in place so that when the medical teams come in, that everything's ready to work. And this eventually leads to access negotiations where you need to negotiate with governments who aren't always interested in having services to parts of their population and then also with armed groups. This has ended up with one of the best ways that I'm able to keep in touch with my family my friends and my Cooper crew, pictures of interesting books from all around the world, but mainly from South Sudan. I've now realized that everybody thinks it's funny to take pictures of really interesting books. And even armed men at checkpoints are happy to have you take some time to take a picture so that you can send it back to New York and make people laugh at home. So I really wanted to thank the greater Cooper community for this award. I really appreciate it. And then for those of you who are able to listen tonight, thank you for your attention and listening to my short story about my work with different NGOs in Sub-Saharan Africa. Thanks so much. Bye. I'm honored to introduce Jennifer Lee, partner in the architecture firm Obra as she is being recognized with the John Q. Haydick Award for the 2022 Cooper Union Founders Day. I can't remember when I first met Jennifer, 
but I do remember our first real conversation, which was in 2012, when she and Pablo were at the American Academy in Rome. I remember that she was not focused on accomplishing a particular objective, but instead was paying attention to all things immediate in the eternal city. By immediate, I mean the light, the food, and the smells, that which is not able to be captured. She found the same sense of delight in Borromini and in great cheese. She found meaning both in the physical and the ineffable. So as a teacher and a practitioner, she brings value to the word and. Work can be monumental and ephemeral, as in the ultralight village at the Shenzhen Biennial, or solid and punctured at the Sanhe Kindergarten. She balances between two opposing conditions, and this ambiguity gives richness to the work. In 2010, 10 years after the founding of their firm, Jennifer was asked nine questions by Vogue magazine, and I particularly liked one of her answers. Question, what is the best kept secret in New York? Answer, if I told you, it wouldn't be a secret anymore. To me, this is her power in the profession, which is not about revealing, but about keeping the secret, withholding certainty, embracing rich ambiguity, and not being pinned down. Her eyes are open to the possibilities of the world, and she inspires us to do the same. Congratulations, Jennifer. It took me a while to find architecture. The possibility of architecture as a life journey was the generous gift John Haydick bestowed on many, including me. As a teenager and a young woman before coming to Cooper Union, I felt rather lost. Mostly, I loved reading novels, I guess because it allowed me a convenient denial of self and the chance to enter into someone else's world. I played piano and violin for many years. I was never good at practicing with any sense of discipline, but was rather good at pretending, perhaps from my early days with the Suzuki method. Because of that, for some time, I deceived myself thinking I could find purpose in music until one summer I attended Aspen Music Festival and discovered I did not belong in the world of the Midoris and the Joshua Bells. I must have been, I'm pretty sure, the worst violinist in the whole festival. Some other time, I won a local piano competition, and on the night I was to perform, I missed my opening cue. The orchestra had to play the introduction again, and somehow I made it to the end of the concert. It was a devastating experience. In college, I fancied myself en route to being a doctor. My father's a doctor. I buried myself in orgo and cell bio classes. I dissected cadavers. I even took my MCATs to apply to med school. But I had no solace and no desire, so I left it all behind. And then I randomly stumbled upon architecture in a chance drawing class in Le Corbusier's Carpenter Center. After that, and probably for lack of anything better to do, I went on to register in an architecture summer course at the GSD. It was there that for the first time, I thought I had a sudden feeling of belonging. Shortly after that, I first heard about Cooper Union. In my imagination, John Haydock rebuilt the foundation building to use it as a Noah's Ark, the bustling urban nexus of Manhattan right below Union Square. Each one of us animals would come in alone looking for our matching pair, that other elusive version of ourselves that would be capable of a steadfast pursuit of life as passion, a search for self-realization, looking for community, for the discipline of love, and for a chance to fight for freedom. John was for me the gray eminence and shaman of that pedagogic alchemy of youthful self-transformation and becoming. John's deanship and his leadership allowed all manner of species to reproduce and thrive by finding that version of themselves they could surmise as worth the life commitment. To be honest, I'm not sure if I truly found myself during my days at Cooper, and maybe I'm still looking, but I am sure that at Cooper, I did find the search and the purpose. 
It was there I had the good fortune to do work study and was able to assist in the archive, helping Kim Shkapich with John Haydock's books, also assisting Stephen Hillier while they worked on the Michael Blackwood film, Education of an Architect, Voices from the Cooper Union. I witnessed some of the completion of soundings, adjusting foundations, and architectures in love. As succinctly summarized in the intro to the book Soundings, and I quote, John Haydock rejects a myopic view of architecture for one in which the architect enters into a social contract with the spirit of open expression that protects the freedom of thought and the freedom to explore. And he believes that the last bastion of this freedom is education. I am so proud to be able to accept this award. And I'm also so grateful to John and to everyone at Cooper. Being able to be a small part of it was one of the most important things that ever happened to me. Thank you again. I'm Julian Laverdier and chair of the August St. Gallens Award, Cooper Union's highest art award for outstanding professional achievement. And I am proud that we are giving it to Patty Jenkins, my old friend and classmate. I'll never forget meeting Patty freshman year, hanging out in front of an anarchist bookstore on St. Mark's. She was a hardcore punk and I was a foppish goth. This would not have made us friends by definition had it not been that we were protesting a common cause. We were fighting for the homesteader evictions in Tompkins Square Park. Patty fought for the underdog from the day I met her. And as fellow outsiders, it's no surprise we ended up in the same experimental elective classes, the Cooper Union's film department. To say it was experimental and small would be an understatement. I can't believe it was 30 years ago that Bob Breer was teaching us this sacred art of editing 16 millimeter on a steam deck. She took naturally to that. Likewise, with Perry Hoberman's first class on computer animation, Patty was a cyberpunk first generation. She introduced phone freaking to the whole class, where she taught us the art of cracking into Bell telephones networks so that you could get on international group calls to find out what the next programs were. Patty had an inherent sense of agency and a natural ability to speak truth to power. She had a true moral compass, and I am not surprised that she has become Wonder Woman. Frankly, Patty Jenkins is exemplar of what Peter Cooper could have ever hoped for in his graduates. And this award was made for her. I expect that there will be a Patty Jenkins Award given to illustrious alumni in the future. Patty. You're setting the bar so high. Congratulations. Thank you so much for the greatest introduction I've ever had from Julian. Thank you. That was such a lovely walk down memory lane. And I remember having so much fun. And then, you know, Julian Leverdier has gone on to be an artist that I admire so much. So I so appreciate that introduction. And thank you all for this incredible award, this prestigious award and something that I'm blown away to be receiving. Um, I'm so moved to be getting something in the name of Augustus St. Gaudens and all of the incredible things that he did and stood for. I'm also incredibly honored to share the award with so many great artists who've received it before me, including my friend and classmate, Julian Leverdier, and most significantly to me, one of the very first artists to ever inspire my own path in the arts, the great artist and illustrator, Mark Allen Stamity, who received it in 2007. Mark wrote a most beautiful book called Who Needs Donuts? And as a child, I was singularly fixated on it and endlessly studied the art in the pages while reflecting on the profundity of the story within. To my great surprise, years later, when I did pursue my own career, I completely unknowingly ended up at the exact same school, this school, where he was when he wrote it. And I've always wondered if the siren song of his artwork somehow subconsciously drew me there to the exact spot where he had written it and to a place where I too could try to learn how to you know, turn my craft and technique in the arts into something as moving as he had. Growing up, it's true, as Julian said, I was drawn to all kinds of creative expression uh, from punk rock flyer art to phone freaking <laughs> to graphic novels and movie scores. Um, 
And though I was a movie buff, I was far enough away from the industry that I never even considered that was something that I could do. But the arts and the emotion that people like Mark were able to capture within something so you know specific was something I was super drawn to. So when I heard about this incredible school with the best reputation in the country for training fine artists, it also stood for this inspiring man's legacy of standing for equality by generously helping those that might not get an education of this level. Otherwise, my dream to learn here at Cooper was ignited and I did everything I could to get in. I was luckily accepted for painting and photography, but the second I discovered filmmaking in Bob Breer and Ross McLaren's experimental film course, I transitioned to being a full-time independent film student. And even at that time, Bob told me that he wasn't sure how to teach me the narrative filmmaking that I was so clearly veering towards. And though there were little other offerings of that literal skill set, to this day, I'm so grateful that this was the best film school for me and the best one I could have found. Um, because the incredible classes that I did end up spending my time in, like Perry Hoberman's Computer Image in Motion, where we were doing some of the first uh, 3D animation in the country, or the videography courses where we experimented with the first forms of nonlinear editing, and all the incredible artists around me all taught me to push and truly think outside of the box, push beyond the boundaries of what one tries to express. And yet the greatest lesson that I got from Cooper is one that has nothing to do with medium at all. It was simply how to be an artist and more importantly, how to aim to be a great artist by trying to use your art to do bigger things in this world. When I look at my fellow alumni like Julian, like Shelley Eshgar, Brew McHale, I can so clearly see the depth of that education bringing forth in all of their work. And I know I've tried to bring those same ideals into my work, no matter what the genre or the size. I've been so honored to have projects with as much exposure as Wonder Woman to now create within, but this school is where I learned to try to make every project, whether a painting or a letter in a new font or an experimental film clip of a moth or even Star Wars, bigger than yourself, about something more and a piece of art that might bring beauty to the world. And that's my way of trying to pay forward the gift that Peter Cooper and so many of you gave to me. So thank you so much for this honor. I wouldn't be here without the legacy of the great man who believed in the potential of so many and the great artists who have inspired me here born of that legacy. So thank you so much. I'm delighted to help recognize Kay as alumna of the year. We met nearly 50 years ago. You know, Kay joined Cooper Union as a sophomore. Among the mechanical engineers, the women were vastly outnumbered. Despite that, Kay fit right in, made some great friends. You know, we worked hard, we played hard, we formed some lifelong relationships. A couple highlights from our time together at Cooper Union. We made some nice memories at McSorley's together. We did a field trip to the World Trade Center and toured the HVAC facilities back when the center was fairly new. And towards the end of the four years at Cooper, we went down to Puerto Rico on a bit of a boondoggle to a mechanical engineering convention uh, that was a lot of fun, formed some great memories there as well. After graduation in 1977, we lost track of each other a bit. I tracked her down about 15 years ago. I flew up to Boston for dinner and we had a very nice dinner together. We talked about you know, life, we talked about her career. Shortly after that dinner, you know, Kay left Boston, went to work for the federal government, worked on international transportation projects. You know, during her career, I think she worked on some very intriguing projects. She spent some time working on projects in Nigeria, in Haiti. And the one that intrigued me most was the year she spent in Kabul as consultant to the mayor of Kabul on transportation projects there. Let me just close by saying I've treasured my friendship with Kay. I think she's an insightful person. I think she's fearless. Uh, but most of all, she's a lot of fun to be around, and I think she's an all-around great person. Congratulations, Kay. This award is well-deserved. I am truly honored to be selected as CUAA Alumna of the Year. I'd like to thank the Executive Committee and Alumni Council for this award and thank Tom Driscoll, my classmate, for his introduction. My career and my connection to Cooper Union have come full circle. I started my career 35 years ago in New York City, a city that I love. I left and returned 35 years later to assist in Hurricane Sandy relief. This also coincided with the troubles at Cooper, which prompted me to run for Alumni Council. 
During my six year term, I served as chair of the election committee and nominating committee and also served on the Gaino Dunn Award Committee. I enjoyed my contact with fellow alums and was struck by the amazing progress the Cooper community has made to come together and act to restore its tuition free status. My 43 year career experience has followed multiple trajectories. My first job as General Electric field service engineer in New York City, I was working on turbine generators. Later, I became its marketing manager in Philadelphia. Simultaneously, I pursued an MBA at the University of Pennsylvania Wharton School of Business. I enjoyed my classes in entrepreneurship. And rather than continue on a corporate path, I decided to start K Nordstrom Engineering or KNE. Based in the Boston, Massachusetts area for 20 years, KNE provided consulting services to public transportation agencies. Opportunities arose in developing countries. This is a transportation improvement study we undertook for Abaddon, Nigeria. We did a similar study for Port-au-Prince, Haiti international work became my focus. I accepted a position with the US Department of Transportation or DOT International Programs Office in Washington, DC. My service as public transportation advisor to the mayor of Kabul, Afghanistan was a transformative experience in my career. The left photo shows my DOT team based at the US Embassy in Kabul that worked to rebuild transportation in Afghanistan. Following my deployment, I received the DOT Secretary's Award. I returned from Afghanistan when Hurricane Sandy battered New York City and volunteered to help in DOT's relief effort. Prior to retiring in 2020, I was senior engineer for the Federal Transit Administration in New York City, helping transit agencies become more resilient to severe climate events. Cooper Union gave me the knowledge, skills, and confidence to pursue these diverse challenges. I'm grateful for my Cooper Union education and glad I could give back in a small way by participating on the Alumni Council. I sincerely appreciate this award. Thank you. Hi, I'm Robert Tan, president of the Cooper Union Alumni Association. And thank you for joining us at the 2022 Founders Day Awards Ceremony. Congratulations to all the award recipients. You are the newest in a long line of accomplished alumni and an inspiration to the next awardees in maintaining the high standards of Cooper Union. I wanna thank Laura Sparks, President of the Cooper Union, and Malcolm King, Chair of the Board of Trustees. A thank you to the Executive Committee of the CUAA, to the Award Committee Chairs and respective committee members who earnestly deliberated on this year's recipients. And finally, a huge and special thanks to Laura Spinner, who has produced this award ceremony diligently and with grace. I want to extend an invitation to join the live Q&A Zoom event with the award recipients now. Please follow the link on your screen or in the description. Thank you. I hope to see you there.